Lovely, okay. So hi everybody. Um, my name is Jax. Um, I am the Community Engagement Officer at the Yorkshire Beach Rangers Project at Cornwall Wildlife Trust. I mean, when we're, we're one of 31 projects all around the country um, under the Arbright Future banner funded by the National Lottery Community Fund. And we're basically aimed at trying to get young people um, more involved with nature. And obviously with us, it's connected with um, uh, the marine and coastal environment. Um, <clears throat> so we, we work in Cornwall, but obviously we're lucky in a lot of ways at the moment in that we can reach beyond that kind of audience that we usually work with. Obviously, it'd be better if it was different circumstances, but there we go. Um, so, yeah, so for this month, for May, because it's Mental Health Awareness Week this week, we've been doing events all month for uh, mental health awareness and to help people with mental health and well-being. Um, obviously, particularly important at the moment, but it is important all, all year round. Um, and mental health is physical health. So, yeah, so it's really important that we're all looking after ourselves and each other and the planet. So for this week, which is actually Mental Health Awareness Week, and for this Wellbeing Wednesday, we have the very wonderful Lizzie, um, who is, among many other things, uh, a Blue Health coach. She's also a marine mammal medic with uh, British Divers Marine Life Rescue, runs Plastic Free Perrinporth, and is part of the Perrinporth Marine Conservation Group as well. She's a busy lady. <laughs> so a lot of you who are around Cornwall will, um, will have met Lizzie or seen her around. Um, but she's very kindly um, uh, agreed to talk to us today about her work with Blue Health. Um, so Lizzie, I'll hand over to you. Do you want to start screen sharing? Yeah, I should start my screen share. Just do okay, so hopefully you can see some a, a nice, beautiful image of a familiar scene, a Cornish scene. So can you see that, Jack? Are you good? Yeah. Okay, morning everybody. So um, firstly, thanks so much to Jax for inviting me along to share a little bit around Blue Health. So that's what I do with a different hat on. So I think I actually had an, as an email sign up at one point, wearer of many hats. So yeah, British divers, I probably know a few of you from um, Ghost Net Busters. So we're also recovering large industrial ghost nets on the beach. But that's not, that, that is my day job because everything that I do has a purpose of protecting the ocean, but it's not my full time day job. So my full time day job is actually, as Jack said, as a Blue Health coach. So what is that? Well, essentially, I'm a professional coach and I, like probably very many of you, love being around the beach. So back in 2009, I, well, 2008, end of 2008, I thought, how can I do what I do and what I love and be able to spend as much time as possible at the beach? So basically started coaching at the beach and learning everything that I could possibly learn at that point in time and it's a continual learning process around environmental psychology so around how do we actually work with the environment to help people promote change sustainable change so whether that is working with things like mental health and as Jack said it's mental health awareness month at the moment or whether it's you know trauma habits patterns tendencies any form of change and like I'm sure loads of you know, when we spend time out in the coast or by water full stop, the environment offers us lots and lots of metaphor, offers us lots of reflections around what's going on within us so that we can communicate those a lot better and so that we can make connections around what's going on for us and, and show up, basically show up a little bit more fully. So since 2009, my full-time job has been actually working at the beach, but I have around blue health some of it will be familiar to you some of it may be new i'm going to share a little bit of science and then a little bit of practicalities around how can we actually access blue health whether that's whether we're, we're accessing real blue space or whether we're looking at more of a virtual way of connecting with our blue minds so i'm also going to go into the blue mind ground as well and what that is so it's going to be less interactive than perhaps we like because that's use of technology limits that a little bit but we do have a chat box which gives you opportunity to type in some bits and pieces on that and, and Jack's is going to have a go at a poll we it's, it's a trial and testing thing we're gonna have a go at a little bit of a poll as well to see to see what your water is so that's that, that I guess it could be a really good place to start 
that ask you what is your water and we've got a poll that i'm hoping Jax is going to post in a second that has some choices now your water could be anything oh something's popped up so i'm hoping it's popped up for you as well your, your water could be any type of water but we've given it sort of streamlined it a bit uh, streamlining being very language very liquid language there so tap in what you think if you what is your blue space what is your preferred blue space and um and we'll see how the numbers move the numbers should be moving on your screen right now so do you like you know it's deep ocean your thing you get really fascinated by the deep ocean is it more of the shoreline lots of you are your shore beach rangers so that would be unsurprising that 95 percent of the moment is is shoreline and that very dynamic space and that's the space that i work in i work in the literal zone i work in a space that's in continual transition and a few years ago i did a study around change and how we deal with ambiguity and how we deal with that sense of non-certainty because i find as a coach lots of people turn up at the beach wanting to grasp onto certainty and one of the things that that continually dynamic space gives us is a reality check that everything is changing moment to moment so lots of the work that i do is around story narrative philosophy philosophical debates around deep time and how the cliff side can help us recognize our space in the world but today we're going to look a little bit more around physiology and what happens with your body in the coast so what have we got wow yeah shoreline shoreline by far looking like it's like it's the winner there now the focus of this this short webinar is ocean but when we talk about blue space obviously that can be any blue space we haven't got domestic water on there which is surprising so we didn't put domestic water on there but actually we take it for granted that we can turn on a tap and have water that's immediately available to us so a lot of the work that i do is actually around us really and truly valuing water for all that it brings us and and acknowledging it so when we're using water to communicate in some way really acknowledging what we're doing there because there's a value to that i read something this morning actually there was an advert for somebody to do your tax returns it was a accounting agency and the picture somebody kayaking you kind of think well what's the relationship there there's no real relationship there between kayaking and your tax return and yet the image that it conveyed was around how people oh yes this is the person for me this is blue space i connect with this so um so we're going to talk a little bit about marketing as well okay so i think i don't know if i can stop sharing i might be able to stop sharing that oh, share results there you go so you can see the results okay i think i've shut that one down right so water is medicine and a lot of the science there's lots more science being looked into but actually essentially we've got enough proof to show that water is medicine for our souls and when you think of water there's likely to be sensations that arise within you and i'll ask you shortly to um to share some of those sensations so blue health what's blue health we hear these terms blue health blue mind um ocean literacy, we hear these sort of interconnected terms. So blue health, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, is it's the research field that looks into the health benefits of being near, in, on and underwater. And it's time spent around that. So it could be research papers around what's the health benefits of coastal proximity, living near the coast. And it's been proven that when we live near, live near a water, we have greater mental health, so we're happier, but we're also healthier physically. And it's multidisciplinary, so it blends. So social sciences come into it, environmental psychology comes into it, neuroscience, human geography, so that sense of place. And lots of the images that I've got in these slides are of Cornish views, so some of you will connect with those as being Cornish. Not all of you are from Cornwall, but, um, but essentially we have that nostalgic feeling of connection when we're around water, even if it's not our beach. But there's something special about certain beaches for some of us. I know that the sound of Perinpore in terms of the auditory piece is very different from say Loo. On the south coast there's a roar in Perinpore whereas it's more of a lapping in Loo based on the coastal structures which you will know more about than me being your shore beach rangers many of you. So we seek to measure the positive impact of water as medicine. Now I'm going to ask you a question actually rather than me just talk at you for 45 minutes. So if you want to type in the chat box really succinctly what do you think why do we want to measure it why would we need to measure the impact of water as medicine if somebody wants to come up with hazard some guesses on that I don't know how i bring up the chat box but Jax, maybe you can shout out a couple of comments that come in around yeah. that sure I'm why just... would it be important for us to measure because if intuitively we know that water is good for us what could be a benefit from knowing how good for it, us it is 
anybody been brave enough to type anything? Yeah, so um, Genevieve is just a conservation of blue spaces. Maya, yeah. it can be prescribed as mental health. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so, so, that it, so that we can change policy around prescribing blue prescriptions or blue prescriptions and so that we can serve it because actually if we know that it has a value then we're likely to protect that space brilliant yes. okay. quite a few others as well if you'd like <laughs> yeah go on anything else, anything else that, that we that, that's two that, that's the two fundamental ones but you yeah, may want to know, okay. what, what have you got, have you got yeah anything? a lot of them are else? a lot of them are along the same lines but kathy has said and um, so we can persuade others to get down to the water for their own help <laughs> yeah so that we can actually like this like distill that sense of water as medicine and one of the prime aims of the Blue Mind Grounds are, which is a group of um, individuals that are really passionate about blue space, is to make the fact that water is medicine common knowledge so that we can actually make it that, that this, is, this is obvious, that everything that I share to you is obvious. And it may well be what I share with you is obvious, but I hopefully you'll get something from this morning. Okay, let's look at some of the measures. Some of the measures that we have around blue health measuring it. Psychological measures. So this circle basically represents on the vertical axis a sense of arousal so if you're going up the axis you'd be being more energized if you're going down the axis you'd be more de-energized and if you look at the and look at the horizontal axis it's it's exploring um, valence so think of that in terms of positivities it's a good experience versus it's a dialed it's a dialed out experience it's not such a good experience and many of the studies actually ask people to experience blue space whether it's images or whether it's time in blue space and to mark on this grid, if you like, what's happening with their mood as they go through. So one of the studies that I did a few years ago did exactly that, looking at jellyfish and measuring, measuring what's happening to people's mood as they, as they experience that. Another one is that which you may have seen is nature connectedness. So nature connectedness is a really simple way of measuring how somebody sees the world. And I use this as a coach because if I'm taking somebody out on a coast for a coastal walk, it's useful to know what their worldview might be and how connected to nature they see themselves. So you've got these seven images and one of them is like, do you see yourself as totally separate from nature? Right way through to this sense of, I see myself as nature and I am the environment that I inhabit. So people mark themselves on this in a very visual way, but for us to understand whether their responses are gonna be skewed in some way. And ideally, um, as advocates for the ocean and advocates for water and the planet, we're aiming to encourage people to move into that greater sense of connection with the ocean or connect greater sense of connection with nature. So, um, so that's, that's kind of fundamental A, that we move out of this anthropological mindset where we think nature is in service of us into more of an ecocentric mindset where we recognize that we're just really interesting organisms on the planet sharing space. So, um, so that's another one. And then tell me if you've got other questions, Jack, shout them out as we go. Uh, feel free feel free to type in questions uh, we'll see how we go in terms of that level of informality it might go sketchy and then we have uh, other trait measures so we have things like positive and negative affects so how people are feeling in terms of generally or um, stress stress trauma and anxiety inventories so different measures around what's going on for them when they spend time in blue space and this particular image that i'm sharing with you at the moment comes from an exercise that was around flotation tanks and what happened with people's experience um, of, of themselves whilst they were in a flotation tank. So lots of different ways we can measure psychological benefits, but they're, they tend to be very, they're very self-orientated. So, so we score them ourselves. It's not, it's not an objective measure. It's, it's how am I feeling marked ourselves. So we've then got some physiological measures. So we can measure ECG. So we can measure, so the study I mentioned that, that I, I choreographed, which was around looking at jellyfish. We had people hooked up to an ECG and measuring heart rate variability. So measuring what was happening with their breath and their heart rhythm and seeing if when somebody experienced observing that sense of marine life, their breath changed and their, and their heart rhythm changed. So um, a finger in the air guess if you want. Do you, think that, do you think that it's likely that watching marine life, your breath and your heart rhythm changes? <laughs> yes, no, it's like intuitively. I'm guessing most of us would say would say the positive for that. And yet, if you want to influence policy to protect the space, it can be helpful to have actual measures, even though intuitively we see that happening. Gaze mapping. So one study 
looked at um, marine litter on a beach so actually observing when there's marine litter on a beach where does people's where does people gaze move so what happens with with where they're focusing and that was interesting from my perspective as a coach being out on the beach because i tend to use litter as a metaphor for how well we're doing so if i'm out on the beach and some and there's a lot of marine litter i might ask my coaching clients you know what's the systemic situation here and how does that relate to to your business that you're running or what's going on for you and it was interesting with that that actually people found more of a negative impact of things like crisp packets and very immediate litter than they did fishing gear because they didn't necessarily see a connection between that also being marine litter so maybe we expect to see fishing gear but that, 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 that i found that quite fascinating so we can look at what what holds people's attention what do they look at blood pressure pulse oximetry tidal flow so um, tidal flow in this in this context being the depth of somebody's breathing now we don't need to hook somebody up to a machine to see when we arrive at the beach we tend to get that big exhale you arrive and it's just and actually you move into a different space and because when we inhale our heart rate goes up and when we exhale our heart rate goes down any of you that practice yoga or meditation will know that actually if you want to move somebody into a calmer space we want to exhale we want to increase our exhale we want to get into that space of of calm meditation so pulse oximetry is the amount of oxygen how oxygenated your blood is and blood pressure is blood pressure and then we have functional magnetic resonance imaging which is less so in the uk it just it, in terms of how much people spend on spend on research usually our research certainly in the southwest is slightly less techy but functional magnetic resonance imaging where we hook people up to fmr scans and that's that you know that has been done around getting people to even think about an ocean view and think about an urban scene and it's been shown that different parts of our brains fire up and become active when we're thinking about an urban view more of that direct attention the type of attention that we have when we're looking at screens uh, the type of thing that can cause directed attention fatigue those parts of our brains fire up even when we think about urban views versus when we think about an ocean view we go into much of that soft fascination so and we've got social behavioral modeling that's my world i train neurolinguistic programming so i observe how do people actually behave in reality what are their patterns and habits and tendencies and a study in the states looked at when people had had opportunity to to look at uh, ocean views and blue scenes experiences of awe created pro-social behavior so actually when we're out in those beautiful scenes the chances are we're more likely to be pro-social we're more likely to demonstrate compassion and healthy habits and tendencies after flotation people slept for longer I bet you sleep really well when you've, when you've been to the beach. Partly probably because you're physically tired, because we're physically active in that space. The nature of the coast in, encourages us to be active, but also partly because we've had, that, we've had cleaner air, we've had that opportunity, opportunity to move in a different way. And our brain has been in a different mind space. And breath awareness seemed to change. Okay, so two minutes for you to think about what happens for you at your water so sensations so i do have a recording here but it's quite loud this is current pool i can give you two minutes to think about what actually happens for you at your coast And feel free to type in one or two words in the chat box.
pain. I still can't see the chat box. So what sorts of things have we got, Jax? So we've got um, on the top. happy and calm, calm, clarity, connection and calmness, peaceful, melting, um, perspective, peaceful and thrilled at the same time, connectedness, calm and perspective, joy, being in the moment, still, complete relaxation, where I'm most at one with myself and my thoughts. Lovely. Lovely. And, on. Um, and Lovely. So in terms of that, sorry, go on. So in terms of that, that sense of uh, valence and arousal, when we spend time at the coast, I, I really love the fact that there's this, there's this high energy and low energy. So we, we're engaged and present. So generally, when we look at that sense of scale, it always moved to the positive when people self-scored their time at the coast. It didn't. So the energy might have gone up because if their habit, if their pattern and habit and hobby might be surfing, there'd be the high energy part of that. And then there'd also be the stoked sensation after. So, so yeah, but the valence, that sense of positive movement is consistent across people spending time at the coast. And in Cornwall, it's really fascinating that in Cornwall, possibly not for this audience, for your sure, but in Cornwall, there's quite a lot of people that do take the coast for granted because they have such close access to it. So, uh, and I think the current time of this, of this recording has really reminded a lot of people of quite how important it is to get out to the coast. So I, I mentioned sen on that slide before, sensation versus emotion. And we tend to label sensations that our bodies experience as emotions. So actually this, this sensation that we're experiencing um, and that could be squirreliness or that could be flutteriness or lightness or but actually, but actually we do label them as, as emotions. So water and our senses, we meet the world through our senses and there's something that happens that's different around a coastal environments. So in terms of the visual field, it's much simpler than an urban field. So we have less distractions, we have less going on for us. So our brain has to work a lot less hard and it enables our brain, it enables our brain to go into a much more creative space. The scene that we look at is generally bands of colour uh, or if we're out wildlife watching, for example, we still go into that soft, those, that sense of soft eyes. Anybody that's been out looking for dolphins, if you're in really hard focus, chances are you're not going to see very much. But the minute you move out into much more of a peripheral space in terms of your view, your field of view, chances are that you notice fluctuations and changes within the scene that you're looking at. And that changes the way that our brain operates. And it also changes the way that we breathe. The other thing that happens when we move into soft eyes is that our internal chatter dials down. So if, in terms of mental health, if we're having a lot of internal dialogue, spending time out on the beach allows us to take ourselves a little bit more external, where there's just the scene and our breath there. And if we wave, if we wave watch, there is enough variation within wave watching and enough sameness that it holds our attention, but it's not difficult to process. So a lot of stuff, I'm not going to cover everything, but a lot of stuff that goes on visually. Auditorily, so the soundtrack that I just played you of Perrinpore isn't actually white noise. It's, it's either pink noise or brown noise. So white noise is a very digital sound, whereas pink and, pink and brown noise actually has fluctuations within it. So it's very different listening to a recording of the ocean versus trying to create it with a background hiss. So that's worth bearing in mind in terms of how we process that sound. It's much more of an analog sound. It's not got that staccato, staccato for us to deal with versus if you're in the middle of a city and you've got train noises and vehicle noises, there's a lot for us to process. So we have chance for our brain to actually relax a little bit and tune into wildlife. We've got quite a lot of bird song outside at the moment, which is, which is lovely. I'm going to do touch, taste and smell together. So touch, you think about how we interact with our environment when we're out on the shore. Again, for those that are Social beach rangers, you're very interactive with it, very hands on. But we like to touch things when we're out on the coast. We like to actually experience the sensation of the sand on our feet or how smooth a rock might be after water's, water's run over it. And that's very different, very much more curious and childlike than we might be on a day to day basis. So our eyes are open and we're paying attention. And that's very much the literal zone makes us pay attention in the here and now. So we haven't got time to really think about. Too much, of, too much else that's going on for us because we're really present. Taste and smell, they go to the gut and the heart. So the most primal parts of us, which is why smells evoke memory. And the taste of salt air, salt air goes right down into our gut system. So we feel connected 
from, from the taste and the smell of the environment. And the smell of different, again, there's like the smell of different coasts is very different. And I'm not talking about the smell of smelly old seals and things, which is something altogether different. But in terms of the smell of like different seaweeds, we know have different smells as well. So encouraging, encouraging ourselves and other people to really connect with that and be, be playful, much more lighthearted. And then for me as a coach, proprioception and vestibular system are really important. How people balance and how people hold their body the impact of gravity on us. So when we're in the water, we don't have to fight with gravity. When we're walking on the beach, we walk in a totally different way, which, is, which means our emotions get wired in a different way. You think about the posture that you have for a bad day when it comes to mental health. The chances are there's something quite closed in it. Our body is quite static. Whereas when you move on sand, it's impossible for you to move in the same way as you might move ordinarily. And also for me, you know, I work with a lot of business people. It's impossible for them to be overly formal because the beach is way more playful. You can't walk in a formal way on sand. Um, you look out at the ocean, the ocean is way more beautiful than you, way more powerful than you, so you can't play status games. So there's all of that other stuff that goes on where we're, where we're all actually just part of that system. So lots going on from a sensory point of view. And, and, in, and in addition to that, interoception, which is dialing into your heart rhythm, dialing into being able to connect with your body and what's going on for you, which again, we sometimes forget to do. And I free dive, so free diving is really powerful for interoception because all there is is your heartbeat in the ocean. So lots going on from sensory point of view. I'm just going to explore vagus, not Las Vegas, but the vagus nerve, and then we will get into some Q&A shortly. So the vagus nerve may or may not be familiar to you. Most of you will have heard of fight and flight and this idea of we either go high energy or low energy, we go into sympathetic dominance when we go high energy, uh, or we go into parasympathetic when we dial out. In blue mind terms, we call that red mind, it's that fight, flight, overstimulated. Actually, it's our new normal. It's our new normal, and that's, that's why the current times that we're in has been, have been quite, uh, quite a contrast for people, dialing down into a different, different pace. Studies have been done asking people to sit in rooms and do nothing for 15 minutes, where they were given the opportunity to do that or give themselves an electric shock. More than half of them gave themselves an electric shock, far more than half. So people would rather hurt themselves than sit with their own thoughts. We've forgotten how to do that. And my friend Justin Feinstein, who does the, does the flotation therapy research, says we are the last generation to remember a time before screens. So that's quite profound, quite profound, I think, in terms of this, we have quite a responsibility to enable ourselves and other people to remain connected with the analog world and dial out that, that red mind space a little bit. So, we want to, so that's sympathetic dominance. And then we have parasympathetic, which is even worse than that, which is when you've just completely dialed out. And that's really relevant for things like depression when we think about mental health awareness. That's freezing and shut down. So that's parasympathetic. But there's actually two parts to the parasympathetic. There's the dorsal vagal, which is this, this zoning out or being asleep. On a positive sense, it might be sleep and meditation, but this dialed out depression. But there is actually another part to that parasympathetic system, which acts like a brake. And that's the ventral vagal. And if you're not familiar with the vagus nerve, the key thing is everything we do at the coast seems to improve vagal tone. It seems to improve our ability to stop us going into that shutdown or stop us going into excessive red mind. So we get into coherence and blue mind. And, we're going, and, we're, and blue mind is, is that sense of light meditative state when you're connected with water. And it gives us an ability to resolve stress and anxiety and bring ourselves back to a space of balance and that's what we're going to explore vagal tone because blue mind is very much about vagal tone and i'm aware that i'm talking quite a lot so i will give you q a at the end okay vagus nerve this is all you need to know about the vagus nerve it's it's awesome okay it's awesome it, it's the tenth cranial nerve it connects to your heart your gut it gives all the signals from your body that tell you what's going on whether something's a threat but actually the, the ventral vagus, the front, the, the ventral vagus, allows us to be able to control our response to that and be in flow and be fluid with it. So social interactions, every time you have a social interaction, you're working with your, vag with your vagus nerve. It regulates your heart. So it allows us to be able to be composed and contemplative. It manages inflammation and immuning. So your immune system is connected to the vagal tone. Blood glucose and energy. Emotions, so reading people's tone of voice and being able to notice people's facial expression and regulating ourselves after stress. 
So five, blue mind, blue health solutions to increasing your bagel tone. One, cold water and immersion. I'm really sorry, but spending time in cold water. Um, bradycardia slows our heart rate. As we go into cold water, our recovery from that, our body's coping mechanism with that increases vagal tone. So it increases the ability for your vagus nerve to be able to regulate your heart, to be able to work with the neurochemicals within you. It's almost like a workout for the vagus nerve. Breathing slowly and deeply. So yeah, I say it's blue solutions because actually when we go to the beach, chances are we do breathe differently. Laughter and socialising. How many of the projects that we do when we're volunteering can be quite traumatic at times? If certainly BDMLR, there's times when it's, it's less fun, but actually you're, there's a sense of community and there's always laughter to be found at some point in time and socialising. Humming does as well. Not many of us in BDMLR do a lot of humming, but humming and singing. Meditation and floating. So you may not go for float therapy, but going in the sea and having a float gives your vagus nerve the time to actually connect with your body. And exercise. And pretty much everything that we do at the beach incorporates a degree of exercise. So they're practical ways that you can increase vagal tone, which then means that you have all the best stuff around the vagus nerve, which are the two things that we've described, the sense of going to the beach and having this calm, relaxation, contemplative, uh, restored. But also the excitement, the enthusiasm, the focus, the playfulness, the achievement. So blue mind is, I said, this meditative state it draws upon blue health science to promote connection to water for social emotional spiritual and physical health and it aims to make the fact that water is medicine common knowledge and it's a collective of all sorts of people so they're artists musicians academics teachers uh, people doing research all of us can be part of the blue mind grounds club all of us can celebrate blue mind it came from a book the term came from a book by my friend wallace j nichols which many of you have read i know that you had a blog did jen do the blog there's a blog post on your on your short page around blue mind do have a look at that there's also a friend of mine has made a film called undercurrents and if you want to have a look at that film i can send you a discount code to watch that there's lots of information about blue mind within that film it's, it's follows two surfers and their experience of their emotional connection with water so um and go to go to the Blue Mind Grounds for us and look up Blue Mind and you'll go to Jay's page, Wallace J. Nichols page, lots of resources around Blue Mind. But it's a groundswell, so there's no hierarchy in it. It's just we're all celebrating Blue Mind and Blue Health is really open. And we have on the 25th of May something called 100 Days of Blue starting, which is a challenge to get near in on and underwater for 100 days in a row and for you to post your pictures of you doing that. Now, your water might not be as accessible as you might want it to be. Um, and when we get around real water, these are the happy neurochemicals we get. I'm going to whiz through these because it might be a little while. Okay, so we get the bliss chemical, we get the achievement chemical, we get the bonding chemical, we get pain killing chemical, we get anti anxiety chemicals, we get confidence chemicals, and we get risk and energy chemicals. So all these things are accessible to us. But when we get but when we get around virtual water some of this is still accessible to us so at the moment we might not be able to get to blue space so it's worth us thinking about how are we going to do that for 100 days in a row how do you actually access water for you and for your mental health why are we doing it well, we're doing it because if you make it part of a habit you make it part of your routine chances are a lot of that will continue but the health benefits will be very evident for you from getting involved with that and do connect with me on 100 days of blue because i've been championing it for the last six years this is the seventh year and I'm really passionate about, about having, having everybody and anybody get involved with it. So what are ways that you can and do experience Blue Mind if you can't get to wild water? Type in your responses. So if you said so this is non-wild water, what are the non-wild water ways that you can connect with Blue Space, do you think, over the next 100 days? So it might be urban ways of connecting. Jack, so I'll have to rely on you to do some reading out again. Domestic settings, what are the ways that you can connect? And what about virtual Blue? What sorts of ways can you... Um, just while people are typing in their answers, Claudine said, where and how can we link into 100 Days of Blue? So, so I'll, send out, I'll send out some links to you, Jack, so that you can send them out to everybody that's been on this, on this. But also go to the Blue Mind Groundswell, so go to Wallace J. Nichols' page. And I have on my Facebook page, because I like to share everybody's, everybody, certainly in Cornwall, like to share everybody's actions. And, and because it just brings such joy, please do connect with me on Facebook as well if you're getting involved in 100 Days of Blue. We will be having some events. I don't know how they'll 
be panning out from a physically distanced perspective, but in terms of keeping people, we'll make sure we keep people safe. But we will be having some ways of engaging socially, whether that's remotely or um, screening some films, for example, and getting some people out and about so in a safe way near again. Starts 25th of May, it goes right the way through till September. So we have plenty of time to get involved. And if somebody misses day one or two, it doesn't matter if they can come in at any point in time. It's not a completion thing. And it's not about putting yourself under stress to get to water, uh, to get to, to really push yourself to get to water, a certain type of water. It's supposed to be a fun and enjoyable experience. So what have you got in terms of ways of connecting? Well, I'll just say that <clears throat> when I send out those links, I'll send out links to all the other things that you've mentioned as well, including Jen's blog and the undercurrents film. Um, so a few different suggestions, um, a bath, cold showers, canals and rivers and a wildlife pond in the garden, Lido's, I'll look at that from down here, um, meditation with the sea and river sounds and images of blue spaces, yeah. um, poetry and yeah. photos, Beautiful. Doing coastal Twitter accounts and painting from holiday photographs. Lovely. But every waterway ultimately leads to the sea and think about those important things. Oh, beautiful. That's beautiful. So yes, it's so so many, so many. I mean, I've got, I've chucked a few on here that are, these are non-wild water. So choreographed might be a flotation tank or a, yeah, or to have some rest. An aquarium, when, as and when they, as and when they're open. An aquarium. I mean, no, people don't seem to think that it's odd that you go into a dentist and there's fish there. That's that's that. This is it's ubiquitous. It's around us all the time. Fountains, virtual water. We said, you know, you said music. Make make a soundtrack of your favourite ocean related or or water related music. Poetry, meditation, films, art, decor. My sofa is my entire sofa is covered in this material. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. Can you see it? Can you see it? I don't think you can see it. Yeah. It's ocean. I have an ocean sofa so that if it's a dull day, I can sit. I can sit in at least. But I mean, I'm very near the ocean. VR, virtual reality, 360, and live streams. So I'm currently watching Monterey Bay Aquarium. We've got a live stream of the seals. So, um, so actually connecting with it through live streams. Domestic pools or water parks, spas, baths, hot tubs. Having a shower. We have our most creative thoughts in the shower. Running through the sprinkler system on um, Perrinport Golf Course. Pretty cool. <laughs> so it's, yeah, oh, dancing in the rain I've got here. The language that we use, play, being playful. So we, so there's a few of our blue health coaches I know dialed into this call and we use very liquid language very deliberately to create that fluidity. So if we're feeling challenged from a mental health perspective, creating movement within that through the language that we use. Cloud watching, you know, skimming stones, there's so many different options. So that's urban. And then in terms of the what's your water from an applied blue health point of view, uh, when it comes to real space, Think about what your what your natural water is which beaches do you love the most or which streams or estuaries do you love the most or short what are the shorelines that you're particularly passionate about and how can you get out in them and that might be near in on or under so it might not be getting in the water depending on the conditions and safety but actually connecting with them in my top five uh, or top four there free diving i love to free dive uh, we have the mammalian dive reflex happens so our spleen even gives us more red blood cells to, to absorb the oxygen more effectively. So the water actually provides us with the tools to be able to connect with it. So we are wired to connect with water. Hand planing, the joy of just being completely wiped out and put back in your place. Joyful, yeah, you feel really light. Paddle for plastic, go out, go out and do some, do some kayaking, paddle for plastic. As Ghostbusters, we're connected with Odyssey Innovation, who, do, who recycle ghost nets, so go out go out and kayak. If you're doing something meaningful in blue space, it's even more restorative in terms of its health benefits. So you have that eudaimonic well-being rather than the hedonistic, it feels great. It actually gives you more of that life satisfaction to do meaningful things like beach cleaning, that sort of thing, which I know you promote. Watching waves, just watching the waves. Beautiful meditation. And I mentioned cold water swimming in the littoral zone. So Time spent near, in, on, or underwater is useful for social connection, which is great to have so many people that are volunteers that are dialed into this call because actually it shows what the benefit that we're getting from volunteering is. And I'm doing a study with British divers at the moment, putting together a questionnaire around those blue mind benefits of volunteering with BDMLR. Really happy to share that with you, with you, Jacks, for, for the World of Trust. Lots of research has already been done about the health benefits of volunteering. But I've noticed 
as a, as a social scientist, as, a, as an NLP behavioural modeller, quite, quite how significant the benefits appear to be when we work with marine mammals. So whether that's working with social anxiety, PTSD, um, they're just, they're just in, a, in, in the activities that we're doing rather than it being a therapeutic activity, they're just part of that connecting. Cognitive awareness, so, so actually becoming really present, waking up our heads, waking up our brain. Spiritual awakening, so feeling connected to something that's bigger than ourselves. Having psychological safety, so being able to enhance our vagal tone so that we can be psychologically safe, so that we can actually manage our mood. And it's awesome for physical health. Again, none of that's probably a surprise for you, but capturing it in that way helps us recognize quite how important protecting the space is. Okay, last two slides. Time in blue space creates nostalgia and anchoring. That's an NLP thing, anchoring. We habitually know that, that probably our happiest times were spent around, <laughs> around the coast for many of us. So we associate the beaches positive. We associate it, for most of us, as a really positive place. It lacks formality, so it encourages us to play. And if we play, we're in a much more learning frame of mind, which enhances creativity. When we connect with wildlife, we know that we're part of a wider system, that we're not at the top of that hierarchy, so it encourages compassion. Or creates pro-social behaviour, improving our gratitude and connection. We have solitude, so solitude is very different from isolation. Solitude is having space to be with our thoughts whilst recognising that we're connected with the wider world. And that's one of the things looking out at the horizon does for us. It recognises that we're part of this bigger, bigger planet. And it gives us community, so meaningful actions foster collaboration, allowing us to be present and the fact that the littoral zone is a dynamic space of equi dynamic equilibrium occurs, requires us to pay attention and so much more. So as a blue health coach, I want a perspective shift. I go from this and some of you will have seen this type of image before, egocentric, where we're asking the question, what can blue space do for us? What can blue space do for our mental health? To actually recognising that we're part of it we're part of the system we're not at the top of the tree it's not about uh, it's not about taking taking from that resource it's about recognizing that we are part of that resource and that's that's part of why i have a strong corporate social responsibility to look after that space it's part of why i do i would do talks like this so thank you for inviting me to be part of this because this talk will support british divers marine life rescue who are very close to my heart and thanks to all of you who've joined in, otherwise I'd just be talking to Jax about this stuff. Get involved in Blue Mind because Blue Mind will enable you to really get in there for 100 days in a row. I thought I was really ocean connected and I am really ocean connected. But the first year in 2014, I said I'm going to make more of a conscious effort to do more than I ordinarily would. So I could look out my window and see the sea and tick the box and say I've done it. But that's not the same as truly engaging with the space so just dial it up a little bit if you're already quite connected do that if you want some blue marbles i can get blue marbles to you blue marble is the symbol of ocean connection so we hand out a blue marble to say i'm grateful for the role that you play on this planet i recognize that we're interconnected and that we all have a role to play in terms of connecting with each other and protecting our water so if you guys who are on this call or wildlife trust want some of those i can i can get you some of those we sell them but we also sell them so that we can give give them away at lower cost and free so that's part that's part of that if people do want to buy them the funds from those the profits from those go to british divers and blue mind so that's entirely up to you watch the undercurrents film it's a great film um some new filmmakers uh, but they've done a beautiful job around really capturing our sense of connection Blue health coaches, reach out to a blue health coach. I know some of them are on here at the moment. I've started training blue health coaches earlier this year, and it's actually, the course became accredited by the International Coach Federation, which means that it's actually a professionally registered and recognized accredited coach course that puts the environment at the heart of everything that we do, which is amazing that that's, that that's become recognized, that that is, it's not about the environment being a second thought. So reach out if you want some more help, but actually just go and get out in blue space yourself. The resource is free and it's freely available to you to do. So what questions, insights? I've got all of about, <laughs> all about 10 minutes for questions and insights from you guys. I'm going to stop that share. because That was me talking quite a lot for my 50 minutes. So yeah, so what, what, what questions or thoughts or insights does that raise within you? Lovely to see your faces rather than my slides. That's really lovely. 
That was great. Thanks, Lizzie. I was just going to say if people um, want to, either they can t type their questions into the chat or you can, um, if you click on, I've lost it again now. There is a way you can put your hand up. There is. Yeah, I'm going to find it. Oh yeah, reactions. Along the bottom, if you put reaction, you put your hand up, I can see who wants to ask a question. Or if anybody's got any comments or thoughts. What have you got to sleep? We need us talking at you. <laughs> um, so Cathy, um, who works a lot with the C, um, said, love the slides on happy hormones. Cool. Yeah, Cathy, I can get those to you. That's, that's totally fine. I know Cathy. Cathy has actually runs a social enterprise that encourages people to connect while wandering wisdom, I think it is, or while wandering women. She works at a social enterprise. She can put in the she can put in the chat the correct name for that on her website. But it is all about helping people connect with water for their health benefits. And it is a social enterprise, so it's got a triple bottom line in terms of giving back. Rachel said she will join in with a hundred days. Yes. And I think it will be very good, especially at this time. Awesome. Please do, please do join in and, um, and connect on Facebook so that, so that I can share what you're doing as well. It'd be really lovely to see. Cathy said it's um, Wild Wonder and Wisdom CIC. Oh, I got it right the first time and then second guess myself. <laughs> um, Katie Perry said, I'm landlocked in Birmingham, so, we'll be, so we've built a pond during lockdown, so I'll try and join the 100 days. Please do, and please do send some pictures over. My, um, my Facebook is goingcoastal.blue or just connect as Lizzie Labalestia. So I have a business one, but because most of my coaching clients, we connect as people, um, I'm really happy to, I don't separate the two. So feel free to connect on Facebook because I would love to see what you're doing for 100 days in your pond, in your self built pond. Brilliant. Yeah, a few, quite a few people saying that they're going to join in with it. Brilliant. Which is fantastic. Brilliant. Is there any other questions? <clears throat> if not, then we will. We'll wrap it up. Just while we're I hope, talking, so I'll... I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it useful and that you did get something new. Yeah, you're all very water connected people, clearly, if you dialed into this, but I hope you've had something new that will be useful for you to put into practice. And we'll be we've recorded it and we'll be putting it up on the like I said, the CWT Marine channel. So if you feel like it would be beneficial for other people, then please do share it. Um so I'll get all those links from you, Lizzie, and send them out to everybody who was signed, who's been signed up. Um, Charlotte says, thank you. Very insightful from, insightful from landlocked Hertfordshire. Um, oh, thing is though, you're, you're still connected. It's a one blue marble, there's one big blue marble. So even if you're landlocked and in Hertfordshire, you can still connect with your blue mind. So thank you for dialing in from, from there. We'll be sharing lots of images of the beach, so to do connect so that you can get some virtual blue. Um, well, thank you again. Thank you so much, Lizzie. And uh, it's awesome to hear a bit more about your work and what you do. Um, Thanks. And yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Um, yeah, we'll get this up on YouTube. And I'll get those links out to you. You okay? Enjoy your day and get in the water or get near the water of some form. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thank guys. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye.